All right. Well, good morning, Dick South. It's still 15 minutes until lunchtime. So I have a confession to make. Um, it says Matt Pardick, but I'm not actually Matt Pardick. I'm an AI generated hologram that looks and speaks just like Matt Pardick. And if we're lucky, we can just hit accelerate 1.5 speed and we'll be out of here in no time. Seriously, how do you know the difference? The difference is I'm a real human, flesh and blood right here in front of you. A little bit about me, and I'm going to accelerate this because I am in between you and lunch. Been in financial services 26 years. I've got a book. I have a couple copies if you'd like a signed version. Um, passionate about the engineer. I've worked with small businesses for 20, 26 years. I'm actually a rocket scientist, so all this AI stuff is fascinating to me. I'm a pilot, black belt musician and philanthropist. And most importantly, I'm a believer in human decency. I think with everything going on deep down, we're still good people. So today I'm going to talk about what is the widening gyre? Why is it important? How does the business owner fit into it in potentially a really good way? How trust is being eroded? What public trust is in small business? I'm going to throw a little history at you with Silent Night, World War II, and a couple tools that the business owner can use in choosing your own Silent Night. So first thing, what is the Winding Geyer? So this is actually a poem by Yeats written after World War I talking about the end of all things. It's the second coming. And he says, turning and turning in the Winding Geyer, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. Center cannot hold. And I have to give props to Ben Hunt and Epsilon theory, uh, because I've been reading a lot of his stuff, and he talks a lot of these about this concept and what's going on in today's world. And if you think about it, people are kind of pissed, right? I mean, so I was over at a rest stop last year um, after dropping my son off at boarding school, and it was a unique experience. The, the rest stop was closed. There were just a bunch of portalettes and everybody was just mad. Nobody was looking at each other. And all I could think about in my head was that Beatles song, look at all the lonely people. <laughs> Where do they all belong? We're in a really unique time. And I think there are reasons behind this. First, so I've been around in financial services for a while, and um, Charlie Munger said years ago, um, if you want to know the outcomes, tell me the incentives, or paraphrasing as such, right? Following the money is really important if you want to figure out what's going on. And I think this is a big part of it. So if you look at the amount of money that's going into elections, it is exponential. And I think that it's going to a specific purpose, right? It's trying to influence how we think, what we do, what we decide. And some of it may be good, but let me just challenge you. So y'all can probably fill in the blanks on some of this, but how does this make you feel? MAGA Republican. Woke Democrat, January 6th, Hunter Laptop, mainstream media, disinformation, threat to democracy. Or how about this one? Trump versus Biden 2.0. Okay. A little uncomfortable, right? See how you have a visceral reaction to words. We all do. We have a, vis we have a real reaction in how we respond to words. How about this? Campfire, empathy, grandma, kitchen dinner. Feels different, right? This is how we react to things. Words are very, very powerful. And really, you know, all this craziness that's going on, it's not new in the United States. I mean, I mean, who's seen Hamilton? 
Most people have seen Hamilton. So Hamilton and Jefferson hate each other. I mean, you just look, see what they said about each other. And I just got a couple of really fun ones. Um, Hamilton said to Jefferson, he's so seditious, so prostitute a character. That's good stuff, man. I mean, you know, you want to insult somebody. Um, Jefferson said about Hamilton, he's a man whose history is a tissue of machinations against the liberty of this country. <laughs> Nothing new. This has been going on ever since the nation was founded. What's different is the amplitude. That's what's different. That's the amplitude. And I do think that chat GPT can increase that amplitude for good and bad. It's a large language model, language model, right? You just felt how language gets us, right? Either way. So we have a AI that can, it maximizes language. So it can maximize how we feel about things. One added antidote to this that's really important to know, and I'm, I swear I'm going to get to how business owners get into this, or how it's important. But one antidote is just knowing about it, knowing about it. Because one of the best defenses is the knowledge that it's happening so that you can be critical. How about this? You know, the timing of everything, we just had a pandemic, right? I mean, one of the worst things a prisoner can have is getting put in solitary confinement. Why? Because you're alone. We're humans. We need interaction. This is, this is how we grow and thrive. And uh, the pandemic took a lot of that away from us. So that was another reason. We're kind of mad. We're angry. So I'm going to share another thing. And I am not a game theory expert. But I'm going to share something that I think will illustrate an important point, and that is in some of, of, of what's going on, um, and again, how the business owner can help, and that is the stag hunt game. The stag hunt game, you can look this up, and I'm going to summarize very quickly, is imagine you're a bunch of hungry hunters in a dark wilderness, and you can't see anything, and you got a gun and a flashlight. Everybody's hungry. So you got a dilemma. You turn on the flashlight so you can hunt your prey and you get shot. Maybe, maybe not. What do you do? It's a dilemma, stag hunt dilemma. That's a weird game. But what is underlying that? It's trust. Do you trust the fellow hunter? That's what we've had is a loss of trust. And really that's what this talk is all about. How do we regain trust? How can the business owner help in regaining trust? Well, of course, as I mentioned before, there are gonna be a whole bunch of other things that I'm not gonna talk about that I encourage you to look up that'll help you to see what is real and what is not real, where things are gonna to try to influence you and where you can try to get as much objective truth as you possibly can. But the business owner, if you think of all the loss, loss of trust, um, right now the small business owner is ahead of the military, K through 12, labor unions, churches, universities, large corporations are near the bottom. And you know what? Politicians aren't even up on there, right? Because we kind of know where that's going to be. So the business owner has a really unique position. Why? Because they're local. They're local, they're part of the community. And I also think the business owner has been through this, the process, the process, the risk of startup, of discovery, of competition. They've taken theory and applied it into reality. Because if that reality didn't match the theory, you go bankrupt, right? So business owners have tried and gone through that process. And that's another reason that they're trusted. So how do we change the game? Fun story. I love this story. World War I, front lines, Europe, mustard gas, Gatlin guns, bayonets, no man's land, hell, 
right? You've got people who have seen things that nobody should ever see. Then what happens on Christmas Eve? Germans start singing Silent Night. Americans join in, or the Allies join in. They come out of their trenches and they hang out. Can you imagine? Why? Change the game, right? Trust, shared humanity, change the game. It changed the game. So how can the business owner change the game? So it's practical and you know a lot of this stuff, but it is important and it's impactful and it can change things. First, reciprocity and reputation. So you're a small business owner. If you do something nice for somebody, out, no matter where it is, whether it comes back to you immediately or not, that karma is gonna come back eventually. And it helps build reputation. It helps build business. It helps build community. That's a real simple thing, but it's really important for business. Building community, business owners are faces, you know, they have a leadership position, they have employees, uh, uh, depends on the size of the organization, but they have maybe a large number of employees, large number of customers. So there's a lot of visibility. So building community at work is one way to rebuild this trust. Sounds simple, but it's really important. And of course it does affect productivity. And again, profitability, building community with clients, public, that's, um, that's having a social function. That's, I'm not a golfer, but let's just say you do that thing every now and then, you know, golfing, what, whatever it happens to be, building community, it, it does help with marketing. They call it marketing, but is there a deeper meaning to it? I would argue, yes, it absolutely does. And it's one of the main reasons why the small business owner is so high on the trust scale. So I would encourage you to do more if you're not doing um, or <laughs> start doing it if you're not, and if you are doing it, do more. Um, practical tools. So um, these are part of my book. So I am an author, and chapter seven, I talk about tons of books. I just kind of brain dump cool ideas for who I call the big hearted business owner. Um, so employee benefits, taking care of your people, love your people, um, treat them obviously with respect, employee engagement. There are a number of things that I, I would consider employee benefits 2.0. Salary obviously is important. Um, going a little bit above, over and above that could be um, wearing a little bit of purple. Um, so there are some organizations like those in purple that uh, uh, can help and I'm not affiliated with the people in purple. But I would say that that can be an over and above thing to do. Um, Non-qualified deferred compensation is something that we do. It's something that we do for employees to help them link to your mission, your statement, your profitability, attract and retain people. They're the Swiss army knife of benefits. It's a way that you can show appreciation monetarily for employees. Um, there are a number of, I think I, I, I think I skipped over it, but there are a lot of employee engagement programs from companies that are really in Charleston area and really anywhere else where, um, and some businesses will do this. They'll have a employee engagement officer, depending upon the size of the business. But I would encourage you, depending upon the size of the business, if you're small, maybe just do stuff yourself. If you're medium sized, look to a consultant. And if you're large, you probably already have an employee engagement consultant. That all that is is building a community and appreciation with employees. There are charitable tools also that the small business owner can do that. I mean, if you're going to help the community, if you're going to give of some worth to the community, there are a lot of tax deductions that help with this. Um, there's a concept that I call social capital. That is, you know, you're going to give away some of your wealth 
whether you like it or not. And you can give it away either to taxes and let DC figure out what to do with it, or you can give it away with under your control and get deductions so you don't have to give it to the government. So this is a way to get a little bit more control. So you can give appreciated stock, real estate, um, uh, publicly traded stock, uh, stock in your corporation, avoid the capital gains, and of course, get the, the total tax deduction on it. You can do these things called charitable remainder trusts, which is a way if you know that you're gonna have a sale of some kind, but you still need income for a period of years, you can get a deduction, you can avoid the capital gains on uh, whatever it was that grew while it pays you an income stream until at some point it ends up going to your charitable cause. Charitable lead trust is kind of the flip side of that. That's where um, it's providing the charity income and then the remaining part of that goes to your family as part of, the, as part of a plan. These are all ways that a business owner can leverage. Donor advised fund is a way to make a gift now and spread it out over years in the future. So a donor advised fund, what that, so if I have a big sale of my of a property or business stock or whatever, but I'm not sure which charities I'm going to give it to, or maybe I don't want to give it all at once. A donor advised fund is a way to get the deduction now and then spread out that gift over years in the future. So who watches Ted Lasso? Right? I mean, I love the show. So I, I happened to look, ask chat GPT, all right, why is Ted Lasso a great coach? And what it came up with was empathy, positivity, adaptability, effective communication, personal growth, relationship focused, and humility. Those are some pretty good characteristics for really any form of leadership, right? business owners, coaches. So many of you already have this, but a mission statement is a way for you to figure out, all right, what's your silent night? What's your mission? It helps you as a business owner focus on what's important to you and keep from getting caught up in the fray. And in case you think Ted Lasso is a little Pollyanna, there are real life examples. Jurgen Klopp was known for these same characteristics, the uh, coach of Liverpool. Uh, Phil Jackson of the, uh, the Bulls was known for some of these same characteristics as well. So Ted Lasso, okay, he's imaginary, but the principles really are not. And I think people are really looking, especially in today's loud world for that positivity. Um, and if you think Pollyanna again about not arguing and humanity and, and kindness, you think about the people throughout history that have used those very things to change the game. Martin Luther King, right? Gandhi, Nelson Mandela. And there was a poor carpenter that said to love your enemies. They changed the world with this type of stuff. It is incredibly powerful and it's incredibly powerful for business too. So I'd just like to say, conclusion, there, there are many heroes if you just look around. Uh, right here in Charleston, there is a, the Medal of Honor Society and they give awards, Civilian Medal of Honor Society awards. And you can go on their website and see kids, adults that are doing unbelievable things, going into burning houses, saving kids, saving drowning children, starting nonprofits from nothing to help disabled veterans. It's a really long list. There are heroes everywhere. So I just like to challenge every, you, every one of you, you can be a hero too. So that's my book. I've got a couple of them. If you'd like to sign copy, how do I do?
Oh, yeah, so we caught up a little bit, right? I had it on 1.25. Any questions? All right, let's go have lunch. <laughs>